in the number five. And then riding shotgun on the field, that's the Sunoco sponsored number 94 of Tiana Kibbe. Set for the green flag and Greg Merriman puts it in the air. The NEMA lights are underway for their feature event. On the outside, Chris Vos gets the jump in the number three, but here comes Anthony Payne right back on the inside. Anthony Payne down at the bottom. Here comes Bud Marbulio up to the third spot right now. He's on the hunt down the back straightaway. Moving to second, now challenging for the lead. Yeah, he would like to win this race. His brother's memorial race is Anthony Marbulio. Right down underneath Anthony Payne in the race for the lead down into turn one. Buzzing down into turn number one. They go side by side. Here comes Anthony Payne up around the top. Pass Bud Marbulio. Another car on the move, that's Paul Scali in the number 30 on the bottom. He comes in the fourth position. Yes, yeah, Scali picks up a spot, work at the bottom, and Randy Cabral's right behind him in the 76. But we're watching the battle for the lead down into turn one. Marvulio now by about a half a car length, but Payne coming right back on the outside. A Ford on the outside, and Oldsmobile on the inside. That quad four now leads the way going down into turn number three. Anthony Payne trying to make the move work up on the top side, and back in third, a great battle brewing there between Paul Scali. Gally, Jake Trainer, and Randy Cabral. Anthony Marvulio has uh, passed J uh, Anthony Payne. Almost said Joey Payne. Anthony Payne in that number 21. Now Payne getting gobbled up by Paul Scally. As Scally works the inside. And Randy Cabral on the move in the number 76. 21 of Anthony Payne dropping like a rock right now. Something might be amiss with that car because he's already lost three positions out there on the track. And yes, it looks like the car is slowing as he goes down the back straightaway. Meanwhile, into turn three, Anthony Marvulio looking for his second win of 2019 in the NEMA Lights, continues to lead. Paul Scally giving chase in the number 30, and he's bringing the 76 of Randy Cabral with him. Back in the fourth spot is the number eight of Jake Train. And Randy takes the upstairs right around the top of, of Paul Scally, makes the move work. He'll go to the second spot a little bit deeper in the field. Kyle Valeri looks at the inside of your point leader, Ryan Locke. There's Marvulio with the lead, but uh, right now we see that uh, Anthony, uh, rather uh, Randy Cabral is trying to come in and uh, Paul Scally off the pace in the number 30 as he moves to the bottom of the racetrack. Battle move, Jake Trainer up to the third position. He's going to battle with P.J. Sturgis in that number 11. Sturgis, a former winner here in the NEMA Lights at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. Yeah, P.J. Sturgis, the most recent winner of the NEMA lights at the Lee Speedway last weekend. He's all over Jake Trainer in the race for third. But Randy Cabral now reeling in our leader, Anthony Marvulio, as they make their way out of turn four. Great battle going off in the third spot. P.J. Sturgis to the inside of Jake Trainer. Lock behind them, watching it all. A little further back in the field, here comes Richie Coyne, the number 19 machine. He is already up to the sixth spot. Yes, yeah, Sturgis now third. He'll try to track down the leaders as Jake Trainer tries to get back underneath him in the third and fourth turn in that number eight. A little loose, has to slide up behind Sturgis and Ryan Locke closing on them. Good save by Jake Trainer, but eyes are now moving to the front of the field. Randy Cabral is hunting down the car that he actually owns, Anthony Bud Marvulio in the 35, and now he's going to make a move for the lead on the bottom. Yeah, here's Randy down on the bottom, trying to make the pass to take the lead. They're side by side across the stripe. Marvulio stays with him on the outside. Randy on the inside. Randy's now able to clear him out of turn two on the back stretch and puts the 76 in the lead. Problem continuing for Anthony Payne. He's going to pull down onto Pitt Road. Looks like his day is done with, but as we go through the field right now, the battle for third really heating up between P.J. Sturgis, Jake Trainer, and that number 38 of Ryan Locke. Leaders have really checked out, and that includes the 76 of Randy Cabral. He's put a number of car lengths between himself and Anthony Marvulio to maintain the lead. Sturgis trying to get away, but he's got a lot of real estate to cover if he's going to get up there and dice with the leaders. Right now, Jake Trainer, who's behind him, is coming under attack from Ryan Locke in that number 38. Yeah, Ryan Locke on the move right now, making that grass-cutting line work, taking the short way around, and he's really making it work for him. The Trainer has the momentum up on the outside, has some daylight between himself and Ryan Locke, but don't know how long that's going to last because Locke is working real well on the bottom. Randy Cabral, who had some uh, problems with that car last week, but it seems to be all straightened out now as he's flying down the backstretch has opened up a big, big lead 
over Anthony Marvulio, and he'll see the cross flags this time when he comes by, halfway through the Nima-like feature. Greg Merriman with the halfway signal as Randy Cabral leads the way. Bug Marvulio second. There's that battle once again we were talking about. Ryan Locke to the inside of Jake Trainer. Jake Trainer to the outside. He'll lose the spot to Locke. Yeah, Ryan Locke up one more. Of course, his chase for the championship. Uh, Randy Cabral second in the points coming in today, but Ryan Locke just has to have a somewhat decent finish in order to clinch the championship. He pretty much got it done, but with Randy winning the race, Locke wants to be sure that he can put a lock on the championship, so he picked up another spot by getting around Jake Trainer. He's running in the fourth position right now, and every spot he moves up with just one point and more of a buffer that he puts between himself and Randy Cabral for that Evil Mike championship. Cabral already a half straightaway advantage over Anthony Marvulio going down the back straightaway. Yeah, about to encounter some of the back markers, and that includes Jeff Champagne in the 36 and the uh, Tiana Kimmy car, number 94. Almost three wide as Brady Cabral goes around some of that lap traffic. Just a tense moment for him. As we're continuing to watch some of these cars get around the track, Jake Trainer way up high getting into turn number one. Yeah, Randy Cabral continues to set sail. A multi-time winner in that number 76 this year has given it a good ride for uh, Frank Manafort, and he's doing it again today, a commanding lead in that number 76. Showing why he is a seven-time Northeastern Division Association champion. Randy Cabral, one of the veterans of this division, but wasn't always a veteran. Years ago, he was the young kid in this series, very much like some of the up-and-comers that are coming through the ranks today. Well, as he said uh, in the uh, pre-race interview during our question and answer period today, he was one of our guests down there in Victory Lane, and he said that uh, he was a quick learner, and he certainly was because he has gotten himself well into the history books in the Northeastern Midget Association. Randy Cabral now well out in front looking for his fifth win of the season in the Nima Lights. Coming off of turn number two, he's gonna put a lap on Chris Bose going down the back straightaway. No real bids anymore for position out there as uh, the field is starting to spread out down the back straightaway. In honor of Shane Hammond, we're going uh, 20, 27 laps, so it'll be five to go the next time by. Normally, these Nima Lights run either a 20 or 25 lap feature, but a couple extra laps in honor of Shane Hammond this weekend here at Thompson. And Randy Cabral sees the handful of fingers. Five laps to go this time. Just a handful of laps left. And no real business position anymore going on out there around the racetrack. DJ Sturgis put some daylight between himself and Ryan Locke. Ryan Locke continues to run in that fourth spot. He is the point leader. Man, he's been challenging. He's streaking across the line right now to put 24 laps up on the board. Yeah, Randy Cabral saw John McKennedy do it in the Super Modifieds the last race, and he's putting on the same kind of show as he streaks down the backstretch in that number 76. He's got a straightaway now over Anthony Marvulio. It was a great start to this race. A lot of the cars were very close and jockeying for positions, but Patrician has played its hand and a couple of cars have fallen by the wayside. Some of the players have fallen by the wayside, like Anthony Payne and Paul Scali. We still have some major players that are out there on the track. Of course, one of them being Randy Cabral, who's leading the way in that number 76 machine. Greg Merriman holds the popsicle sticks up high in the air. Just two more laps to go. Two to go for Randy Cabral. Anthony Marvulio second in that number 35. Then the 11 of Sturgis is third. Ryan Locke is fourth in the 38. Jake Trainer in the eight is fifth. Kyle Valeri, sixth in the number 17. And every lap that Anthony Bug Marvulio runs, his mom, uh, Jeff Marvulio, is down here on the front straightaway cheering her boy on. White flag is out. One more lap to go. Yeah, she's uh, going to be impressed with a second place finish here today. And of course, Randy Cabral, uh, who carefully goes down the backstretch in that number 76, actually slows down a little bit, but I think he feels that he's got enough of a lead that he can just coast across the finish line, and he does, to win the Shane Hammond Memorial Race. Anthony Marvulio for second. Oh, here's Ryan Locke in trouble in the number 38. Oh, he's got to get across the line and not lose many spots. He loses another one to Kyle Valeri, and Ryan Locke crosses the line, and it looks like he's going to bring it to a stop just past the checkered flag. So that's how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. 27 laps was the distance. And in the end, one man will stand alone, and that man was the number 76 machine, the Frank Manafort-owned 
Bobby and Matt Seymour prepared number 76 for your seven time Northeastern Midget Association champion, Randy Cabral. He'll pick up the win this afternoon. The car that he owns finishes second with Anthony Bug Marvulio driving it. PJ Sturgis will come home in the third spot. Fourth position will go to the youngster, the number eight machine of Jake Trainer. Pete Falcone is on his way down to the Critical Signs Victory Lane as Anthony Bug Marvulio pulls in his mom down there to give him a big hug and a congratulations. And Randy Cabral is out of the race car right now. He's pulling the helmet off. Let's have a big round of applause for Randy Cabral, ladies and gentlemen. He's down there in Critical Signs at Victory Lane on Sunoco World Series weekend here, the 57th annual Sunoco World Series here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. Hugs and smiles all around. It's a very happy Victory Lane because the driver who won the race is also the car owner with a car that finished in that second spot, the number 35 machine of Anthony Bug Marvulio, who was Shane Hammond's brother. Let's throw it downstairs to Pete Falcone. Pete? Yeah, we're with uh, Randy Cabral. We talked to him, as we said earlier, in our pre-race ceremonies. And he winds up in victory lane, his fifth win in the NEMA lights. But more importantly, you again have won the Shane Hammond Memorial Race. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, actually, the car started crapping out on me. And I'm not sure if I ran out of fuel or what was going on. But I think that was Shane trying to let his little brother win. So, you know, good for you, Shane, but I tried to take it anyway. Well, congratulations to you. You've given this car a great run all year long. And uh, there he is, congratulated by Anthony Marvulio. Of course, Shane's brother, Anthony, who comes up uh, second today in this race. I uh, gave it a good one, but I know this is uh, a very important race for you. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, especially with Shane, everything that happened here. You know, we worked out of the same garage together, and it just, you know, this is always the emotional one for me. I won on his birthday, and I won today, so thanks, Shane. Thanks for what you do for your little brother watching out for us. We really appreciate it. Congratulations, Randy. Thank you. Thank you, Thompson. Thanks for a great weekend. I know it was tough with the weather. You guys did an awesome job. Thanks so much. Thanks to the fans for coming out both days. You guys are awesome. Randy Cabral wins the Nema Light feature, and even more importantly, he wins the Shane Hammond Memorial uh, race here at... Uh, the Thompson Speedway, and he picks up a whole lot of hardware. He'll get the Thompson Speedway World Series trophy. He'll get the beautiful Sunoco trophy as part of Sunoco World Series. And he'll get a nice award from uh, Deb Marvulio, Shane's uh, mom, who runs the Shane Hammond Believe Foundation. You can find out more about that. They've got a display right here on the Midway. And uh, while those uh, photos are going on, we uh, 